All right, hello everybody. Uh, my name's Bill Appleton, I'm the CTO at Metazoa, and I'm here to talk to you today about forbidden secrets of the metadata API. And by that I mean I've, I've been using the metadata API since 2007 or 8 when it first came out, and it is one of the most complex APIs in the world solving one of the biggest problems you can imagine. And it's, uh, it's been great to work with, but there's a lot of unusual quirks and strange things about the Metadata API that are kind of fun to look into, and so that's what we're going to do for the next 20 minutes. Um, how many people in the audience have, have used the Metadata API or know what I'm talking about? So quite a few, that's great, that's great. So the, um, so the Metadata API, uh, today I'm really going to talk about three things it can do, which are pretty much the major things it can do. It can list metadata, it can retrieve metadata, and it can deploy metadata. So what do we mean by metadata? It's not the data in your Salesforce org, it's all the customizations in your Salesforce org. So for example, your profiles, your custom objects, the schema, the custom tabs, all of those customizations can be captured by the metadata API. And so the first command we're going to look at is list metadata. So list metadata will take a metadata type, like say custom tab or custom object, and give you a list of all the custom objects. The next uh, API we're going to look at is retrieve metadata. That'll take different lists of all the different metadata types that you're interested in and bring them down uh, from Salesforce and, you, and write them out into a list of files and folders that have all of that information in them. And the last one is deploy metadata. So that goes the opposite direction. Deploy metadata will take a bunch of files and folders full of metadata and push that into a Salesforce org. So metadata API is useful for looking at the customizations in a Salesforce org and then moving those customizations from one org into another org. So that's what I mean when I say it's, it's very complex. There's 200 different metadata types, but it's very powerful because this is the fundamental way that you can move customizations in Salesforce from one org to another org. So first talk a little bit about list metadata. Now this should be pretty simple. It'll give you a list of the stuff. You can get a list of your custom objects, a list of your custom tabs, or any of the other metadata types. But list metadata does some weird things. So one thing is, if you ask for custom objects, it'll give you all of your custom objects, but only some of your standard objects. For example, history objects, they will not be, in, they will not be returned by list metadata. So what's going on is, Salesforce has different channels of APIs that they give you information through. So the data API will give you all of the data objects. The tooling API will give you a different set of objects, and the metadata API only talks about the custom objects that are really relevant to metadata. And so that's why you know, a history object can't be used in a profile, so it's not in the metadata API. Now, that's why it'll only give you some standard objects. So another thing is, if you ask for user permissions, you can get all of the custom permissions in an org, but you can't get any of the user permissions. And we're going to talk about user permissions a little bit more, but um, it's, it's interesting that, you know, if you think about all of your permissions, you know, manage all data, view all data, all of those different permissions that you can set up in a profile, you can't get those from Metadata List. So Metadata List will give you all of your custom tabs, or will give you some of your custom tabs, but the custom tabs that are standard, that have the standard prefix, will not be returned by metadata list. And that's kind of a problem. You're not getting complete information about some of your uh, standard objects that you, standard tabs that you might need to know about. It will give you all of your custom apps with the standard underscore prefix. And lastly, it'll give you profiles, permission sets, other things like that. Uh, in this case, profiles will have the developer names. They won't have the names in the Salesforce HTML interface. So if you want the to match up your profile names that metadata list returns with the regular names, you need to do that through the data API and through the, the ID of the profile. So that's list metadata. But there's one object that list metadata really handles in a strange manner, and that's page layouts. 
So page layouts are pretty darn complex. They can be for standard objects, custom objects, or packaged objects. And you see I've got examples over here on the right. So if I wrote a layout called My Layout, I could put it on an account object, or on a custom object, or on an object out of a managed package that had the package namespace prefix. So those are unpackaged layouts, but layouts can also be in managed packages. And that's the second set here. So if you have a managed package that adds a layout to the account object, it looks like this, account myspace underscore layout, where myspace would be the, the namespace of the package. So right off the bat, that's really weird because this is a managed object where the prefix is not a prefix. It's in the middle. It's the only object that does this in the entire metadata API. Look at the next example, though, a custom object in a packaged layout. So that's where you've got a custom object with a uh, namespace coming off of a package that's added a layout to it. And lastly, you have a packaged object in a package layout. This happens a lot where you've got a, a custom object in a package with a layout in a package. So here's the problem with metadata list. Metadata list returns unpackaged layout names for packaged layouts. And most of the tools out there get this wrong. And in fact, you don't see layouts that are defined in managed packages because of that. So here's an example of what I'm talking about though right below. So if you've got a managed package field trip with a custom object and a layout, the metadata API will return the first one, but the correct one is the second one. You need to add, if you want to deploy it and you want to retrieve it, you've got to add that package prefix to object analysis. So here's how you do it. You have to look through the metadata list results and look and see if they gave you a namespace. If they give you a namespace, that's the namespace of the package. And for layouts, just layouts, you have to insert that namespace here before the layout name. So pretty tricky. Uh, it's been that way for many years, and uh, it's just a good thing to watch out for. All right, let's talk about profiles. Profiles are the third rail of the metadata API, especially field permissions. So what happens is, if you have, say, 200 custom objects in your org and 200 profiles, and each object has 200 fields, that's like 4 million field permissions. And if you've ever tried to download all the metadata from your org and just seen how difficult that is and your profiles are gigantic, it's probably field permissions. So field permissions are, are tough in profiles. Profiles work in a strange way in the metadata API. The, the data in the profile that you download depends on the custom objects that you download, the custom tabs, the Apex classes, and all the other dimensions of the profile. And the profile's kind of the, they're like they're elastic or something. They're the multiplication of all those different things that you ask for. So when you do the request, what you get in the profile depends on the other things that you ask for. The other thing that's a little weird about profiles is that four of the objects in the profile are sparse. And by that I mean they're, if they're enabled, so for example, if you have a user permission in a profile and it's enabled, you get a flag that it's enabled. But if it's dis disabled, you just get nothing. So it, it doesn't exist. And user permissions are tough on all of the Salesforce APIs. There's no set of APIs from metadata to tooling to standard objects that will give you all of the user permissions. As a matter of fact, if no user has the permission, you can't find out about it at all until somebody goes into the HTML interface and gives that permission to somebody, and then it will show up. So they're kind of like they're quantum mechanical. They don't exist unless you touch them. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to show you it's how we dealt with that. We built a change and release management product and how we deal with uh, user permissions. So here's our snapshot product, and when you're looking at profiles. So one of the things we let you do is we'll let you bulk edit profiles. So these are all your object permissions by profiles down the left and object permissions across the top. And so if you bring up the editing palette and you want to edit your profiles, you can edit them 
But look what you can do. There's two options. You can either force, which puts them in red. Can you see in red on the projector? Or you can just apply. So here they're sparse, but here they're forced. And so what we're doing is, for all of those object permissions, we're putting in no access. And if you explicitly put that into the profile and do a deployment, you'll turn off that object, the, the um, permissions for those objects in those profiles. Otherwise, you can't do it because they're sparse. Does that make sense? And so this is kind of how we handled it from a UI perspective. All right. Okay, so profiles. Oh, this is a good one. This is, this, is a little, this is a little dangerous. You can hurt yourself with this if you're not careful. So there's a bunch of translations in Salesforce, right? There's custom object translations, and they translate all the parts of the interface. Well, when you, get, when you receive a, uh, a translation, it very well might look like this. You see, this is my, I'm translating something into French, and so for five, I, I should put, see, cat sank, right? And um, so when the XML comes down to you, it'll have a comment. And you see, I have that in red. That's an XML comment that says, translate this value, and then you know, deploy this translation back to the org. The problem is, if you don't translate that value, and you, you take a translation file, and you turn around and you deploy the same file, it'll blow away all of your translations. And what will happen is, when, when, you, when you receive it, you'll get the comment, but when you deploy it, it removes the comment, and then every time you have five in the interface, it turns into nothing. So that's kind of crazy in that you can get a file from the metadata API and you turn around and deploy the same file and it blows away a bunch of your data. So be careful of this one. What you have to do here is to remove all that stuff in bold. You have to remove that entire comment when you put any translation back in a deployment. All right, special formats. There's a whole bunch of special formats when you bring down uh, a, a retrieve from the metadata API. And I want to talk about those a little bit because they're kind of hard to deal with. So this is an example of metadata that I've retrieved from an org. And look at the classes. So that's how it normally is. You know the folder name and you know the file extension. And here we've got a dash meta.xml that's because classes are text files, they're not XML, and so each one has a companion XML file, okay? So this is how you will bring down a bunch of Apex classes from the retrieve. But there's a whole bunch of other parts of the metadata API that do not follow this rule, like dashboards. They have an extra folder with the folder that they're in and a dot dashboard, and the folder has a metadata XML. And by the way, under Lightning now, you can have hierarchical dashboards in reports and doc and uh, uh, hi hierarchical folders in reports and dashboards. So it, it gets real confusing, and you can have a bunch of them. And then there's other things like ARA definition bundles, which is uh, Lightning components, that just have a free form whole bunch of stuff in a folder and potentially subfolders. So you see, there's JavaScript, there's CSS, there's a bunch of other stuff. And you know you just have to deal with it. So, uh, so but for most metadata types, it has a well-defined folder name and a well-defined file extension. All right. So, save the the best here for last. One of the things that's happened with Salesforce that's pretty interesting is, as you know, every four months there's another version of Salesforce that comes out. And it'll roll it out to your sandboxes. And then a couple of weeks later, it'll roll it out to your production orgs. And you can't you know, choose not to get it. You're going to get it. And uh, so you, but you get a chance to see it in your sandbox. The other thing that's happening with Salesforce is they now have a whole bunch of different types of orgs. There's so many. There's all these new sandboxes, scratch orgs, dev orgs, uh, uh, production orgs. And a lot of times, the orgs have different standard features. So, for example, the user permissions in one org can be different than the user permissions in another org. 
or the, the objects in one org. You know, so for example, uh, data.com has account.clean data source. That's a field that's in data.com as an org, not in any other org. And so what's going on is all of these standard assets, you can't delete them and you can't migrate them. And so if they're entangled with other objects or with profiles or with permissions, then you're stuck. It'll stop all of your deployments if your deployments are between different types of orgs or if your deployments are between different versions of Salesforce. So it's kind of ironic, but the metadata API does a much better job of telling you about your custom stuff that, that you did than standard objects that Salesforce has done. And it causes trouble in deployments. And I wanted to show you a little bit about how we've, we've handled that. So, when we do a deployment, double click the arrow here, so this is the deployment between two orgs there. Um, what you'll see is that you can put together your, um, oops, wait, I've got the wrong org here. Let me switch to, my, to a demo org here. Okay, so when you do a deployment, here you create your job list and you're building up all the assets you want to deploy. And you do deployment, we have an option here to remove bad references. And what that does is, it looks at the source metadata and says, are there things in there that you're trying to deploy that are definitely going to fail because they do not exist on the destination? And it gives the admin an option to say, just clean all that stuff up. But there's some things that we can't find on the destination. And if you remember, we just talked about user preferences. That's a good example of it. I can't tell what the user preferences are on the destination. There's no Salesforce API that returns that information. So now when I do my deployment, I'm trying to deploy a, uh, an admin profile. It tells me that I failed because I didn't have the permission to edit knowledge. So I'm going to right click that and choose remove references. And now it removes that reference. And now deploy again. And now there's another uh, user permission that needs to be removed. Let's remove that one and deploy again. And now the deployment goes through. So this is just an example of how sometimes you have to clear out standard objects, standard permissions to get your deployments to go through. We've tried to automate it and we have automated it, except in cases where we can't get the information on what's on that destination org. So that's kind of the state of the art at the time. All right, um, are there any questions about the metadata API? Maybe I can handle, handle them or maybe somebody else in the audience can. Any questions? Show of hands. Can you come up a little closer so I'll, I'll repeat your question. Uh, we were facing a lot of issues when we were deploying profiles, like especially the disabled one. So each time we disable, like migrate the profile, the higher or get.